sustainability, how it is currently being achieved. Secondly, I'm going to talk about like discourse and political pressure, i.e. how we affect change within like our political system, how we get our like elected representatives to listen to us, why we need this rhetoric of fear in order to do this. Firstly, like I've got some responses to the speech we just heard. Like, firstly, we heard that we need to be doing more. Like we think that like firstly, this completely like ignores all the changes that are currently being made. For example, like the Durban summit, like brings like brings into play lots of countries, brings into play like lots of questions of legality. I'm going to talk to that later. Um, and then like in second, my second response to this idea that we need to do be doing more is like yes, we need to be teaching more people of the actual catastrophic impacts that climate change will bring about. I think it's incredibly important that people know about this. I'm going to talk about that more later. Like secondly, he says that like Obama's not concerned about climate change. It wasn't in any of his addresses. Like, yes, this is because Obama doesn't have a political mandate on climate change. Like, the people of America are not concerned enough about climate change. This is why it can't be one of America's key issues. What we need, is, like, rather than saying, like, we need to change our rhetoric, what we need to do is target our, like, rhetoric more to people, like, more to the American people, so that they're more scared about the actual effects of climate change. My third response to his speech is that, like, people are put off by this link to their comfortable lives. Like, no one wants to accept this responsibility. Like, we think, firstly, people do need to change their lives. Like, people do need to be forced to take this responsibility. Like, if you say to people, like, it's not really your fault, like, they're not going to do anything right. So when we, like, what we need to do is say to people, actually, this is your fault. Every time you take a long-haul flight, you are contributing to the effects of climate change. You specifically are responsible for this. Like, we need people to stop doing these actions. We need people to start campaigning for, like, harsher, like, harsher regulations on these actions. We think that's incredibly important. And then, like, my second response to this idea about people and their comfortable lives is, like, like, we, like, people realise that climate change is a collective action problem. So no one wants to be that only, like, the only person who doesn't take, like, nice holidays. People need to, like, know that they can campaign to their government. There are enough people who, also, who are also scared that they can campaign to their government. So everyone gets involved. People aren't, like, massively, like, st like, st like stinted. The movement isn't stinted by this collective action problem. My fourth response to this speech is that, like, the catastrophic language is the antithesis to scientific language. Like, we think not in this case, right? So, so when you have, like, a climate scientist stand up and say, like, however much of sub-Saharan Africa will be desert by, like, 2050, we think that that scientific language is exactly what the language of fear is. Like, we think that people need to know this. I think people need to acknowledge this fact and realise that they are responsible. Like, there are specific huge impacts to this. My second response to this is, like, we think that scientific language alone doesn't bring about change. Like, sending out loads of spreadsheets about the like, effects of climate change doesn't bring about the change that we need. We need people to start, like, reading media headlines and being afraid because people aren't afraid by things like pie charts or spreadsheets. We need this language. My last response to this um, is that, like, we hear that, like, Kyoto Protocol doesn't work. Like, we think, actually, yes, it does. Like, it might not work at the moment because not a lot of people have signed up to it, but as soon as people get more afraid, they're more likely to put political pressure onto their governments to sign up for it. Like, what we have is a global collective action problem where no country wants to be the country who makes those sacrifices while everyone else isn't. We need, like, we need that pressure. We need that global response. So, like, first thing I want to talk about environmental sustainability. We think that, like, there are lots of current, like, current policies being put in place, like, specifically because of this fear. Like, well, like, we see the Copenhagen summit, right? Like, the US and China have agreed to mobilise, like, ten, like, 100 billion pounds to, to developing countries in order to, like, in order to help them be sustainable, in order to help them, like, reduce their, like, greenhouse emissions. We think that these countries have also said that they will, at some point, legally pledge to, 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 to reduce their own emissions. Um, then we move on to, like, so, so, like, South America, probably a big place in order to reduce stuff like climate change. So we think that when you have the Amazon, um, the, the Brazilian government is a massive part of deciding whether or not, like, climate change policy succeeds or fails. So, <clears throat> we, what, like, what the Brazilian government has done is it's listened to the rhetoric of fear from its people, i.e., like, it has listened to its people say, actually, we need to stop, like, deforesting the Amazon. Um, we see that the, deforest of it, the deforestation of the Amazon has fallen by 80% in the last six years. Like, this is a lot. This is like, a massive amount um, of forest left remaining, a massive amount of forest like, still being conserved. This is really important um, because it means that the, like, people are starting to take a stance against their government, against the corporate interests of those governments, and saying, actually, we need to be involved in, this, like, the, in the prevention of climate change. And um, lastly, within this, I want to talk about the most recent climate, 
like climate convention. So if we look at the Durban Convention um, in like uh, in, in November like 2011, um, like so so this is like a, a UN convention on climate change. What this does um, is it sets out a roadmap. Um, so uh, like all like all leading countries in the world. So you have 160 countries there, including the US and China agree that they will aim to uh, like make a legal deal by 2015. So you have like the top countries in the world, um, the most polluting countries in the world, like, agreeing that in the near future they will sign up to this deal. The reason they will sign up to this deal um, is because like, more people are afraid, more people are giving them this political mandate. So now I want to talk about this political mandate through fear. So we think that like, <clears throat> it's pretty self-evident that policies come about through political pressure. Now, at the moment, we have massive oil companies, we have other corporate interests campaigning specifically um, like against, the, against measures which deal with climate change. Like, what, what we need and what we already have are groups campaigning for the prevention of climate change. So we have Stop Climate, Cha like, Stop climate Chaos Group. Um, so this is like a conglomerate of different like, anti-climate change organisations. Like, yes, they have a terrifying name. Like, stop climate chaos. Pretty frightening. Um, like, it has the words of the motion in it. Like, chaos will happen. What we like, what this does is it unifies climate change activism groups um, in the UK. Now, when we hear from proposition that like the the, the sort of involvement in anti -climate, like, like anti climate change groups has massively dropped, we point them towards the wave in two thousand and nine, where sixty thousand people like protested about climate change. These people weren't protesting because they like read some science and decided that that science was like pretty persuasive. These people are protesting because they look at the world around them and they think, actually, millions of people are going to die. Like people in Bangladesh are going to die. People who are affected by massive weather changes are going to die. People in sub-Saharan Africa who can't move because they're starving and the starvation will continue because of things like the, the desertation of massive swathes of where they live are going to die. We think that we need that awareness in order for governments um, to start like reframing their agendas, to start moving climate change up their agendas, um, to start like to start like um like, like taking into account climate change. Like um so so we think that this is necessary because climate change policy always negatively affects citizens. It always negatively affects the economy, it always negatively affects actual lives in terms of things like aviation charges. We think that people need to be angry, people need to be scared. Thank you very much, vote for opposition.